and welcome to Mrs. Brickover's art channel. Today we are going to sketch an elephant, specifically an African elephant, and I'll get into a little bit more detail about how to tell African and Asian elephants apart later in this video. To begin, I'm going to start in the center of my paper with the number 11. I love the number 11 because it gives me an opportunity to remind you about parallel lines. Remember, parallel lines are two lines or more that go the same direction and they will not meet. So I have perpendicular lines that would meet at a 90 degree angle, parallel lines that go the same way. And these are going to be the guidelines for my elephant's legs on each side. Next, I'm going to begin the ears. So about two finger spaces up from the top of the 11, I'll just make a little point for myself, I'm going to make a shape similar to the number three, but instead of making it pointy in the middle right here, I'm going to curve it and just soften that line slightly. And remember, feel free to pause any time. For the other side, I'm going to draw the reflection, so about the same, about two finger spaces up. And I'm going to curve up, out, curve in, and in. And it should be relatively symmetrical. Remember, symmetrical means the same on both sides. So I'll have a leg on each side and an ear on each side. Great job so far, everybody. From there, I'm going to add a curved line at the top connecting my ears. This is the top of my elephant's head. Once you have your head at the top, we are going to begin our trunk. So I'm going to start right about where the ear line ends with a sort of diagonal line angling in and down on each side. And this is going to be where the start of my elephant's trunk is. Now an elephant's trunk is actually an elongated upper lip, which means their upper lip into their nose is really long so they wouldn't have a nose here because their nose is all through their trunk. Now from there I'm going to continue on my left side this curved line out and I'm going to add the end of my elephant's trunk and follow that same curve and connect it. So I've just connected that line back to this diagonal line. And right here at the end of the trunk is where you can tell the difference between African elephants and Asian elephants. African elephants have two, one, two, kind of fingers at the end of their trunk and they use those to pick things up. Whereas Asian elephants only have one flap at the end of their trunk that they use to wrap around things. So there's a fun little fact for you. From there, most male elephants and some female elephants have tusks. So on either side of the trunk, I'm going to draw a curved line to a point for their tusks. And it's okay if your tusks aren't exactly the same. Elephants use their tusks for things like scraping off tree bark, digging, and defending themselves. And oftentimes, just like how most people use one hand more than the other, elephants use one tusk more than the other. So one tends to get worn down more than the other side. So it's perfectly fine if they're not exactly the same. And their tusks are actually extra long incisor teeth, which I didn't know. I just learned that when I was reading about elephants. So these are extra long front teeth. Pretty cool, huh? The largest tusk that so far has been weighed, one single tusk, single means one, 
was 235 pounds. That's heavier than my dad. That's pretty heavy. Most elephant tusks weigh about 100 pounds or less, which is still pretty heavy. That's probably about as heavy as some of you or maybe a big sibling. Can you imagine walking around all day carrying something 100 pounds on the front of your head? That's so cool. And that sounds really heavy, but elephants, you have to remember, are huge. They're actually the largest living land animals. And the African elephant, which is the biggest elephant, can get up to 16,500 pounds. Next, I am going to add my elephant's feet. So at the bottom of my original parallel line, I'm going to curve over and up, stopping at the tusk because I'm imagining that the tusk is in front of the legs, and down, and connect to your line on the other side. And then I'm going to add my elephant's hooves. Now you might think that these are toes, and they kind of are in a way, but they don't have soft, squishy toes. They have hooves similar to horses. Now also you may have noticed right now my elephant is pretty straight up and down, but in actuality elephants are very large heavy animals and their bodies tend to be somewhat rounded. So under my ear flap, at the top where my 11 connects under my ear, I'm going to curve out on each side. At the top where my 11 connects under my ear flap, curve slightly out. And from there, I'm going to erase these two parallel lines just inside where, where I've made that curve. And the idea is to make your elephant look a little bit rounder and a little bit less perfectly straight. We are almost done. Now we just have a few little details. So from there, I'm going to add my elephant's eyes. And these will be just about in the middle of the head, not too high up because we have their forehead. So about in the middle, I'm going to draw two ovals. And my pupils, which don't fill the entire space of the eye. We have the cornea around the eye. That's the white part of your eye. And on my elephant's forehead, I'm going to add some forehead wrinkles with some curved and straight lines. Elephants have a lot of extra skin. I'm going to do the same thing on the knees. Each knee I'll make some little wrinkles. Their skin is very tough, but also very loose and baggy. And that's part of their defense against predators, that they have very tough skin, but it also flexes as they move and they have lots of wrinkles where their skin bunches up. And the last little detail that we need is a tail. So I'm imagining my elephant's body goes back. I'm imagining that my elephant's tail will stick out just about there on the side. And they have pretty skinny tails. They're not very wide. Their tails act kind of like a, a whip that they, or like a fly swatter that they use to swat flies off of their bodies. So it's very skinny and whip-like can move very quickly. From here you can choose to color your elephant if you would like. You can either use your regular pencil to shade it in as elephants are usually gray to a brownish color. You could use crayons, markers, colored pencils, or you can leave your elephant white as it is. Uh, white elephants, which are called albino elephants, are considered a sign of royalty in many countries around the world because they're very rare. So I'm going to choose to leave mine as it is. However, I am interested in seeing what backgrounds you might be able to add for your elephant. Elephants can live all kinds of places, from grasslands to forests, deserts, and mountains. They can be found all kinds of places. So decide where you would like your elephant to live, and I would love to see you sketch your landscape to go with your elephant so that your elephant can have a habitat.
Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, feel free to go back and rewatch if you need. Pause at any time and reach out if you have any questions. I can't wait to see your pictures of your artwork and we will see you next time.